Grant, a few players back over the last couple of weeks, which has been a real bonus. Kyle Hurst, Ben Close, are they back for this weekend? Um, yeah, Hurst is, Ben Close no, um, possibly next weekend. Uh, so it's uh, it's looking it's looking better. Obviously, seeing Tom Anderson, Harrison Biggins, uh, Kyle Hurst, Tom Nixon, um, all coming back and returning has uh, is, is, uh, is been a positive uh, impact on on the training week. I don't ask, but any fresh issues ahead of the weekend? Just Tommy Rowe. Uh, it's just obviously frustrating. Uh, when I say Tommy Rowe, he's, he's obviously sus suspended. Um, we did appeal the, the, the sending off because we felt at the time that there was there was no speed in his in his action. Um, you know, in terms of what he was trying to do, he was trying to control the ball. He, the, the guys come on his blind side. Like I said, after the game, uh, I felt it was harsh at the time, but unfortunately, it got. Uh, they said no, uh, but they didn't say it was, it was frivolous, which is good for us. And we don't get an extra uh, game on that. Um, but to miss three games for that is is really really harsh for us, c considering what we have seen in, in numerous games over the over that weekend. And uh, you know, it's just disappointing for us. Yeah. Because when you look at it, his eyes never leave the ball, do they? There's not a lot that that he can do about it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they came back and said his foot is high. Um, I get that, but um, we, we had an argument of, you know, George McEachern and I had it at Hull for, for a few weeks, and I know how small he is. Um, so it's we asked, that, 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 does that come into consideration? It obviously doesn't. So, um, yeah, we're, we're frustrated with the, with the outcome of it, but, you know, we'll keep really working. Uh, we'll keep him fit and keep him going. And... Um, he can play in the in the game against Everton under twenty ones here in a couple of weeks' time, so that'll, that'll be good for him. Did Anderson and Biggins come through okay? Yeah, they trained well all week. Yeah, come through the game well, trained up, trained well all week. So it's it's been nice. The training ground's been really positive this week. You know, with uh, with the players coming back from injury, and uh, you can see the you can see the competition. You know, hotting up now. Is it kind of season starts now? In, in a sense, I know there'll be a frustration that you didn't have the, the players available now at the start of there, but with everybody coming back, does it feel a little bit more like you've got a, a squad to attack the division? Yeah, it feels a little bit more normal, um, I would say. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been difficult. You know, there's a lot of days where, where we're relying on the under eight teams to come in and uh, taking a bit away from Frank's squad as well to come in and help us with the numbers and training. Um, but not so much the case now. I think we had one or two of them in and around, but in, in and around us today. Uh, but it's uh, it, it's nice to say. Look, it's it's it is what it is. You know, injuries are part of football. Um, I don't don't get me wrong, and I've never won to moan about injuries. But you know, it just seemed like we had a, a severe bad luck, a bad luck for you know for for the last three four weeks, considering what we what we've picked up. Wanted to get a few reflections on the transfer we know now it's it's closed and you've had a little bit of time to kind of digest everything that's happened Louis Marsh just starting up was that one that you were looking at throughout the window or was he somebody that kind of came available later on no look we, we always have targets um, regardless whether we're in the window outside the window you know Lee Glover uh, James Coppinger work very hard in terms of identifying players for us as well as myself and Cliff um, you know, we have targets in every position, probably seven or eight in every position. Um, Louis was really high up on that list all through the summer. Um, we did ask earlier, but with Sheffield, uh, Sheffield United's injuries in, in the attacking area, um, it wasn't Paul Heckenbottom was never going to let him go out. Um, and it just so happened on, on the days of the transfer window, a couple of days previously, they, they brought a couple of attackers in, which, which freed Louis up uh, for, for to come to us. How do you feel about the, the window as a whole? Because you, you did a lot of business early on, which was a criticism that had been levelled at, at the club before. Are you happy with the, the squad that you put together and the, the kind of timings of when you managed to get things done? Yeah, I think we've put a real good mixture together of youth and experience. Um, and it's like anything, it's, you know, we have to keep working with them, uh, getting to know each other and, 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 and keep going. So it's obviously difficult when you know, you have those amount of players come in, um, add that to the probably 13, 14 injuries we had at one stage. Uh, at the same time, that's difficult. But to get everybody back, starting to get people back fit now on the grass, obviously we've got some long, longer term ones still with Jamie Sterry and, and George Miller. Um, but starting to get people back on the pitch um, is a real bonus for us. One of the, 
the kind of minor criticisms that, that we've heard this week from supporters looking at it was that at the start of the summer, um, Tammy Bramwell talked about a, a significant financial injection into the squad. Some people have said they don't quite feel there's been those high profile wow signings that, that maybe have come in. How would you kind of respond to that? I haven't got a response for that really. I don't know what they mean by that personally. Um, you know, we, we feel like we've brought very good players into the football club. Um, you know, and like any business, you, you're given a budget to work with. We felt the budget that we had was, was was good in terms of what we could bring in. Hence, why you see the 12, 13 players that come in. Um, so, I don't know how to answer that question. That's just an opinion from the outside that I'd probably rather not um, try and get involved in. You've not, as a club, though, not spent too many kind of fees on players. I think this year a lot of the signings have been frees and loans. It's fair to say a lot of that injection of finances that was talked about will have gone on on wages. Well, we paid we paid a fee for George Broadbent, um, which is obviously undisclosed. So that's I can't speak about that. Um, so there's a you know at the end of the day we we you've got to make a conscious decision. Do you go and spend the money on on a big fee and leave yourself with with very little? That's that's. Man- managing the budget that's what you got to do and it's just like any industry it's not just football um, but we feel like what we brought in is 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 good and uh, we know that they'll they'll start to improve and get better as we've seen over the last two or three games and, and do you feel happy with the backing that you've got from the club bearing in mind of the the aim of trying to get out of the division yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I think the club's been brilliant really supportive um, I think since we've come back everything's been been, been very good people's gone above and beyond uh, fans have been outstanding um, we can't ask for much more we just want to make sure that we that we improve on the results that we've seen over the first six games that's that's a given um, and let's see where we go how much are you looking forward to the Wrexham game the, there's clearly a lot that kind of goes on the edges with it with with all the talk and, and the ownership and everything at, at their end but in terms of a footballing aspect to it as well it, it's got a real kind of good feel about it I'll just say it's the next game whether it's uh, it doesn't matter who it is for us really we we want to continue to improve on what we're doing and keep and keep moving forward um, you know it's for us we we know we're in we're in decent form um, obviously results could be better um, we know that but I think over the last three games I think I guess if I look at the first six games really in the league forget about the cup games for a minute I think there's been two of them where we've been really disappointing and and four of them where we've been we've been right in it. Um, and, and probably could have got more points. So that's probably something that for us, you know, we've looked at and we've debriefed this week as a as a, as a staff and, and, and players together. Um, that we need to obviously performances are okay and they're great, but it, look, we know we're in a results business. And we wanna we wanna see more wins on the on the board, um, and that's what we're looking to do over these next six. I would say. As part of your preparations for the game, have you watched the the Wrexham documentaries? No, I haven't actually. I haven't. Um, it's uh, you know, for for me, I'm just focused on my team. Um, I'm focused on my team going there and, and putting in a good a good performance. And hopefully, it can result in us getting the three points. Would you fancy that though? Camera crews following you around all the time and all the the kind of extra interest and scrutiny that that brings. Uh, truthfully, I haven't even thought about it. Um, like I say, it's that's every club's different, um, and, and obviously, you know, they've got. Good, good owners and stuff like that there at Wrexham so, but for me my focus is on my club and, um, and what we're trying to do here In terms of their squad do you expect them to be right challenging at the top of the league I know some of their results haven't maybe necessarily been as good as they'd have hoped um, Look they're just new into the league there's obviously the manager's very experienced um, they've got experience in their team as well with some of the additions they've made they're a good team we know that um, you don't you don't get that number of points in the National League and uh, and you know we've seen that with Notts County so um, we know it'll be a tough game but for us we, we have to focus on us Huge travelling support as well going nearly 1,200 going from, from Doncaster I mean that's it's going to be a wonderful day out but for, for you that's great to see isn't it that's incredible back yeah, in Yeah I mean the support has been the support has been outstanding here um, since we've come back and you know we've been told the numbers have, have, have risen from, from last season and the season before which is, which is brilliant for us and um like I say, we we're obviously just frustrated that we haven't we haven't put more wins on the board for them. Um, but we can see it turning. We can see it shifting mentality and a shifting mindset. And 
players coming back from injury and we can see players starting to adapt to, to, to the surroundings, understanding each other more. Um, and I'm sure that will, you know, the tide will turn. Good luck. Thank you very much. Grant, um, how do you make sure it's one of those sort of four positive performances then rather than one of the two sort of uh, more Jekyll ones? It's just our, we, what we've done this week, um, our game plan, putting that in place, making sure that we can go there and deliver it. We need every single one of them to, de to, to deliver the game plan. Uh, we can't have any passengers, uh, but that's for sure. Um, we know what they're about, they're strong, they're physical, they're good at set plays, they're good at long throws. Um, we're going to have to be mindful. Just wanted to touch on what Adam said about the transfer business. Um, is there money left for January? I know it seems like a daft question, but are you all spent up or is there a little bit of wiggle room left? Oh, I, mean, I thought these questions were going to stop after the winter. <laughs> <laughs> but um, listen, I haven't thought about January, honestly. I haven't thought about January. Yes, we're working in the background in terms of recruitment and stuff like that, but you know, for now we're, we're focused on the next batch of games, really, and the, and the next one. Um, you know, that's that's... And, and to be honest with you, those sort of conversations were probably keep in house anyway. Do you, do you understand what I mean? I wouldn't come out there and start splurting. Oh, you've got three million pounds to spend in January, so don't worry, it's all good. That's, that's not the way I speak anyway. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about things like that. I appreciate your honesty there. How's Louis settled in? Louis's been good. Yeah, he impressed everybody on Monday with his finishing. His finishing was, was outstanding. Such a hammer of a right foot, like side foot. I've never seen anyone hit the ball so hard, to be honest with you. Um, Last person I've seen hitting the ball like that was David Healy, who I played with for Northern Ireland. So it's um yeah, his finishing has been good, he's impressed people. You can see that he's done a lot of work on that sort of uh, sort of uh, bit of his game at Sheffield United because he looks he looks clinical. Is it too early to give us your opinion on him as a as a prospect? Like we can see uh, listen, I've watched him for for a long time now. Over probably over the last year, year and a half. Um so um, you know, he's, before he comes to us, he signed a new three-year contract with Sheffield United. I think that shows you how much they they rate him. Uh, so this is the next step in his development is to come and play men's football um, in in a, in a good league. And I feel like League Two is is strong this year, really strong in terms of you know there ain't much gap between the League Two and League One in my opinion. The way the way teams are shaping up, um, so it's a it's a good environment for him to to learn and. You know what we're about as as a management team and coaching staff is we love giving young players the opportunity to go and to go and show what they're about, but also um, taking it upon ourselves to, to improve them. I wanted to ask you it's your first taste of League Two as a boss, six games. So you've got a feel for it now. Has it taken you by surprise in any way? And have you learned anything so far? No, no. I th I, I came into this into it with my eyes wide open. Really, I knew that this was going to be a, a tough, a tough year or season if you want to look at it like that. And, um, we're going to have spells where we look disjointed, uncomfortable. We probably have, we've probably probably seen that in a couple of games, particularly Newport and Notts County, um, probably two that spring to mind. Um, but then there's been other games where we've looked good, we've looked organised, we've looked a threat. Probably haven't, well, we haven't got the results that we that we that we probably deserve. But um, you know that's what we need to try and turn. Feels like the team is in a good place to go to Wrexham and uh, and get a result though. Well, I hope so. I hope so. I, mean, I don't think anyone will give us a chance. You know, if you, if you look at the league table, so we know it's quite early in the season still. Um, we know if we can continue performances that we've shown over the last two or three games. Well, so we'll talk about the two games in, in the league. Then it, it gives us a real. And I think I've seen a, what I've seen in the in the game on Saturday against Swindon was a team that was working, was running, was fighting, um, was leaving everything out there, particularly in the second half. You know, having to having to defend and um, organise each other out of possession to to. To stop a team that scored, I think, 11 goals in the previous two games, you know, so it was a it was a real testament to the lads, the 10 men in the second half, and, and dug in for each other. It's a it'll be a sellout for them as well, down in Wrexham. So it's an easy game for the players to get up for as well, you'd imagine. Yeah, I think they sell out nearly every game, don't they? Um, I think I was told there was nearly 8,000 at there. Papa John's game. The game during the week, which is incredible, really, because it seems like people don't come to them games in the early stage. So um, we know, club, we've 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 been down there, we've seen the games. We know the atmosphere is, 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 is in, can be intimidating before the game, but for us we've got to play the game. You know, we, we've got to make sure we play the game, play our game and, and, and see where it takes us. Final one, uh, Jamie Sterry and John Taylor, just to check in really how they're getting on. John's fine, he's, he's improving, he was he was on the grass yesterday did, doing some running. Um, slowly but surely he's getting there. Uh, Jamie, and, uh, Jamie and George Miller um, are in the training ground now, they had a, a week or two off because of the operations. Um, but they're in the training ground, starting to, starting to up their up their rehab, but probably still a wee bit off.